Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. I hope everybody enjoyed my video interview earlier tonight with Casey, the rock star flipper. It was a great time and a great honor for me to be on that show. We talked about time management, and so if you missed that, you could definitely go and check out that video at the link down below in the description section. I'll also link to it at the end of this video if you don't want to go down there. But uh, definitely check it out. It was really, as I said, a fun time, and um, I think you get a lot out of it. But uh, in terms of today's video, I want to talk about how to quickly and easily resolve customer concerns and complaints. It doesn't always have to be a long, torturous, drawn-out process. Sometimes it could be done very quickly and easily. Now. I had the idea to do this video because based on timing, you know, I recently did a video on when you feel that a customer is trying to take advantage of you and manipulate the returns process, how you have to stand up for yourself. And I show you in that video how I took care of that situation and how I, um, how I addressed it. And if you remember that video, I talked about that I was supposed to get some money back through eBay and I hadn't got it back yet. And I had to call several times, but I eventually did get the money back that I was supposed to in the form of a $22 voucher. I said $19, but it was $19 plus a $3 shipping label. So that situation, uh, just as a follow-up, did work out uh, very well for me. So go check out that video. Uh, it's a few back in which I talk about again how to uh, stand up for yourself when buyers are trying to manipulate you with the returns process but in this situation I'm going to show you as I talked about in that video sometimes we mess up as sellers and we make a mistake and you have to own up to that when that happens so let me take you through the item to show you exactly what I'm talking about here now this is a vintage 1992 double-sided original Dream Team Olympics USA basketball t-shirt. Um, you know, just as, a, as an aside, if you ever see these type of character uh, sports shirts, especially from the 90s and there's some in the 80s, they are very, very popular and they always sell. I've never had one not sell. Um, you know, sometimes they'll sell even for you know up to like sixty dollars or more. You could get some crazy prices off of it. Um, so yeah, definitely just just keep that in mind. It doesn't even matter the sport, although basketball is certainly uh, you know one of the most popular ones. So you could see this is front and it's back. And so I have a picture that zooms up on the logo. And the reason, by the way, why I do that just as another strategy uh, item is because if I just had this item uh, shown first right here, or this view of the item shown first, what's gonna happen is in the thumbnails, it's gonna be trickier, as you could see there for the, you know, if you look down here at these four, it's gonna be harder when someone's going through the, um, through the listings to, you know, basically see what's on the picture but if you zoom into it like this this is much easier for uh, you know a potential buyer to see exactly what it is that you have and that'll kind of make it more likely that they'll they'll click on it and, and take a closer look so take those zoomed in shots and put those up first uh, as the picture of the item and then let them come in and you could show the more expanded uh, zoomed uh, zoomed out view of the item but uh, anyway, I have the pictures of the item up, and when you look at my uh, description of it, I do say that uh, it's in good condition, no rips or holes, that's true. Uh, I do say that there are two stains on the top left front of the shirt. Now, I don't normally use the word stain, and I've talked about that in a prior video. I try to stay away from it, although there are instances where if it's just so blatantly obvious a stain, I'm, I, I feel there's no choice sometimes but to use the word stain as opposed to discoloration. So, uh, so you know, sometimes you have to do that. Now, I didn't zoom in on the stain here, but uh, I did mention that it is there. Uh, now, the issue that the buyer had with the item, the buyer received it, and by the way, uh, it says $39.99, but uh, true to form, I used my meet in the middle approach to sell the item, so the buyer had offered me $30. I said, let's meet in the middle at uh, $34.99, 
and the buyer said fine and and purchased it and just so you know in terms of how much i have into this item uh barely anything i mean this is something that uh, and i've talked about this a lot this big comic book and collectibles haul that i that i purchased where i loaded up my uh, my car four separate times um, it, it, it's barely anything invested in this, like uh, seriously less than a dollar. So, you know, whether I make $30 on it, $35, you know, it's still going to be a great profit on, on the item. So, uh, just keep that in mind, uh, as I go through this, but in terms of the message that I received from the buyer, um, earlier today, uh, you'll see here, hi, receive the tea today. While your description was accurate about the two stains, there's a lot of yellowing throughout the tea, most notably around the pit areas, back of neck and lower back of shirt. Now, I know because I remember this item that um, the buyer's not off in saying that the shirt did have some yellowing. Um, my mistake was not pointing that out during the listing and assuming that the pictures would pick that up. Uh, unfortunately, as you go here and you look at it, um, it doesn't really pick that up that well, uh, if at all. Um, in fact, it looks pretty white. Now, don't get me wrong, the shirt is not literally yellow, uh, but there are some yellow areas on it. Um, it does have kind of a yellow tint to it in some spots, and I should have mentioned that, and I didn't mention that. Now, I obviously didn't purposely leave that out, because if I was trying to purposely leave out that there are stains or, you know, or, 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 or yellowing, I wouldn't have pointed out that there were two stains on the top left front of the shirt to begin with. And I really do try with my items, if there are any flaws or issues, to, to point it out and make sure the buyer knows because I don't want the buyer to get disappointed when they receive the item. That's not a good situation. But uh, obviously in this situation, uh, I didn't uh, disclose it uh, properly enough. So how did I respond to it? Uh, first two words that are the most important that you have to use for proper customer service. I'm sorry. That, those two words are so powerful for for a buyer to hear it's so rare these days for buyers to hear sellers especially on ebay taking responsibility for making a mistake that that alone often floors them i actually had one case once where someone just said i'm so shocked that you actually took responsibility and didn't blame me for it the person actually said this said i'm so used to sellers blaming me whenever there's a problem that I just cannot believe how you're going to help resolve this situation for me. So just saying I'm sorry, starting off on I'm sorry, uh, is, is a great thing to, uh, to, to start the interaction off with. So I said, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Sorry that you're not fully satisfied with the item, period. Um, now, then I said, I always try to be as descriptive as possible, but sometimes something may get overlooked. Now, the next question for me is, how do I resolve this for the person? Because in the person's initial email to me, um, he does not say that he wants a refund. He does not say that he doesn't want the item anymore. He doesn't threaten me in any way with calling eBay or negative feedback. So, you know, you do have to ask, how could I resolve this for you? Sometimes people will say, how can I make this right for you? So for me, I had to try to get an understanding of, of how I could help this person out. So I said, do you still want to keep it? Uh, if so, I can offer you a partial refund for any inconvenience. Now there's some people hearing that that are going to say, no, 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 don't offer partial refund. Don't do that because that's going to cause buyers to go out there and, and, and try to abuse the system and, and manipulate you. Well, then go back to my prior video because the prior video is one where I specifically say, if you do think you're in a situation where someone is trying to scam you or manipulate you, then you have to stand up for yourself. But I'm saying when you make a mistake, 
then offering a partial refund or there's other solutions I just started here that you could offer a discount on future items for example or you know, uh, you know discount on a future sale there, there's lots of ways that you could uh, try to uh, address it um, and you could be creative sometimes but a partial refund is often the easiest easiest way in fact eBay actually promotes that they support you doing that as a way to resolve an issue um, because you know think about that compared to another option what's another option the person could send the item back for a full refund and then you have to relist it and you have to sell it you have to pay for the shipping label to get it sent back to you and even for a light you know item like this it's gonna cost several bucks to get it sent back even first class so let's see what happens let's see what the seller says uh, I'm sorry what the buyer says in response to that well good news for me right there you could see uh, he says I love the shirt I plan on wearing it but I was surprised by the amount of yellowing to it I get that it's a used vintage piece but was not aware of the yellowing and 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 that's you know if we want to talk about a way that this could have gone bad a defensive reaction to this could have been and I could definitely see this happening with some sellers what do you mean you're surprised that it's yellowed it's a vintage shirt so you know and just leave it at that now you're gonna have a buyer that gets dug in and gets really annoyed and it, it could start really going down a bad uh, a bad route and you could eventually wind up getting a negative feedback as a result of how you interact and handle this situation so person says thank you for offering a partial refund and this is very nice I'm open to whatever amount you deem as fair now this is important as well you know remember you still are in business and you've got to try to balance out in a situation like this how do you make the customer happy while also balancing out that you'd still like to make some money on the item right so you know here I kind of weigh it in my head and I say well this guy's still happy with the shirt he's not that upset about it he's just frustrated because he didn't know there was as much yellowing as there was on it but he still wants it in fact he's not disgusted by it at all it's not like he plans on not wearing it he plans on wearing the thing so um, that kind of helps me factor in how much of a discount I'm gonna offer don't give away the house in these situations so he paid thirty four ninety nine don't give twenty dollars off okay it doesn't make sense that's not commensurate with what he with the degree of complaint that he has so I'll show you what I wound up doing I said okay it looks like you originally wanted it for thirty dollars when I was selling it for forty now keep in mind this does include free shipping so I said we settled at thirty five dollars I said what if I give you a five dollar refund so you get it for the price you originally offered so you see how I psychologically put that out there kind of just say hey you know listen you originally wanted for 30 I'm gonna give you something you really wanted originally you're gonna get it for that original price that you that you wanted just kind of reminding him of that and again apologizing again my apologies I must have thought the pic showed the color sufficiently but I was clearly wrong again admitting that you made a mistake multiple times sprinkle in a couple apologies in there all this is done for a reason you want to make the person feel good and you have to remember that this is someone who's gonna have to consider how are they gonna leave a feedback for you is it gonna be a positive feedback a neutral feedback or a negative feedback the more you can accept responsibility and and show that you're trying to help the person out in the situation the more likely this will turn into a positive experience and end off in a positive way for for, for both sides so uh, ultimately what happened here was um, person said that works for me thanks for quickly resolving this issue so I went actually straight into PayPal and just offered the person uh, not offered I gave the person five dollars back it's quick and easy I didn't even have the person go in through eBay and open up a returns request because frankly I don't want to have to deal with that I do, you know that's something that um, gets put officially in the system and and you know I don't you know eBay's tracking this stuff more and more and more and the less I have to have on my record that people are sending in return requests uh, trust me 
the better it is for your your seller status in the end. So I, I don't want to I don't want to mess around with that type of stuff if I could avoid it. Sometimes people will open up a return request um, no matter what, and then you have to you have to deal with it. But in this instance, if you could avoid it, you know it's best to avoid it. Per, give the person five dollars back. So now it's thirty dollars. You know, still ultimately winds up being a nice profit for me on this shirt. And this, by the way, goes to why it's important to negotiate early on and not just accept offers that come in that are lower than what you know you could get for it. I've sold a lot of these types of shirts before and I know what their value is and I know how many watch, there were a bunch of watchers on this item at, at, at some point. Um, I might have relisted it so at the time I sold it there might not have been a ton but there, there were a lot at one point so I knew to $34.99 would, it, would, it would sell for that amount. And the reason I mention this, if I would have just automatically accepted the 30, well now when the person gets it and I give a refund of $5, uh, now it's $25 in terms of what I made for it. So now I'm back to what I originally could have gotten if I just accepted the original offer. So, you know, no big deal really you know, to me. Um, I, you know, and ultimately I'm happy, he's happy. Well, how happy is he? Well, let me go over to my feedback and we'll go right here and we'll see that he just left me feedback and it is positive feedback smooth and easy transaction seller communicative and quick to resolve issue awesome that's great because now when someone comes in to purchase something else in my store and if they do read that feedback what does that person now know hey if I buy something from you know from Primetime Treasure, I know if I have an issue that they're going to resolve it for me and they're going to help me out, and that gives that person more confidence to buy the item. So if you could create that consumer confidence, that is great for your business. It helps generate sales. So you know five dollars off, but uh, remember that's going to be out there as feedback, and that could actually help you make sales in the future. So um, that's the long and the short of it. I just wanted to take you through a very basic, simple, uh, quick and easy way to resolve um, you know, customer uh, concerns and customer complaints. It happens when you're in a business. Don't get so shocked when someone puts in a return request sometimes. I mean, you, what business, think of what brick and mortar business, for example, doesn't have people coming in and making returns. I mean, they have whole departments dedicated to returns. If you're going to be in business and you're going to be selling higher volume uh, items, um, you're going to get returns once in a while. Sometimes you're going to make a mistake. Just own it and do what you can to make the customer satisfied if you made the mistake. Again, if someone's trying to manipulate you and um, you know take advantage and um, you know uh, cause problems for you, then stand up for yourself and see my prior video on that. Um, once again, make sure you go back and check out my video with Casey the Rockstar Flipper. Uh, that will be coming up right here at the end and link to on the bottom. Make sure you like this uh, video if you enjoyed it. Pass it on to others. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, especially if you are coming in here for the first time, trying to get that subscriber count up. Come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link to that is down below. And uh, also come by and check out my Instagram account where I put up exclusive video content that you do not see here. Little minute, uh, one minute clips where I do little tips and tricks and stuff like that. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. And um, by the way, if you watch my time management uh, video, you'll notice I say that sometimes I'm down here at 4.30 in the morning doing videos. And right now it is 4.53. So true to form, it's a good segue into the uh, next video that you're going to see if you missed it. So uh, go check that out. Have a good time. And I'll see everyone at the next video. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.